Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the NextGen Destruction Toolkit. In this video, I'm going to walk through the quickest way to hit the ground running with this asset and get started making your own destructibles. So basically, um, inside this uh, breakable object blueprint is a data asset that takes in all of the useful information it needs to populate a uh, destructible. So you've got your geometry collection, some options, sounds, breaking effects, um, some material override stuff, etc. So what we want to do first is create this geometry collection. So you can uh, bring your own meshes, use something off the marketplace, uh, mega scans, whatever. For the purpose of this, I'll use mega scans because it's just really simple uh, to bring in and work with. So I'll get this modular building wall here and this rough plaster, which is going to be the internal faces for when it's broken. And um, yeah, let's fracture this. Uh, well, let's see. So, go to fracture. Let's create a new fractured one there. Yeah, in the mega scans folder is fine. We'll go uh, GC mega scans wall. And we definitely want to add internal materials, which is going to be like, you know, the broken faces. So, we'll create that. Let's uh, do a cluster fracture um, around 42 for max number of clusters for this one. Uh, just random seed and some a little bit of noise uh, that looks all right I think I'll fracture that uh, yeah 428 pieces um, the sort of upper limit I guess I'd do on an object like this is around 550 but you could go up to a thousand really depends on what you need and how much you're clustering it uh, all of that sort of thing so let me select all of these I'll go I like to flatten, even though it's already flattened here, which just removes all the clusters and puts them at uh, the first level. Um, but I just do it out of habit because I'm often like reclustering and that sort of thing. But let's do an auto cluster on all the pieces. Um, I want maybe like a uh, 10 pieces per cluster thereabouts. So let's just do like 42 for instance in cluster sites. Yeah, these, these are fine. Yeah, you can play with these though if you want. Um, all right, so we've got those clusters. Then we probably want to merge all this tiny geo to its nearest neighbor or nearest cluster. Um, so what that'll do is it'll just, you know, reduce the number of pieces in your sim and small pieces are really not fun to work with. They can, you know, bug out and clip through geometry or that sort of thing. So we'll just merge those. Um, and then one more thing I'll do is these internal normals. They tend to look better, at least in my experience, if we recompute them with sharp, uh, sharp edges recomputed and just leave everything else uh, I'll recompute that. Um, and then what I'll do is for the bottom here, I want to have some kinematic pieces. So I'm just going to select this bottom row. Let's see. Yeah, I'll select uh, all of these. Maybe get rid of it couple of things there and what this is going to do is I'm going to set these to kinematic which will essentially anchor them maybe actually I'll introduce a few more that's fine um, and that will yeah essentially anchor them so I'll go to state kinematic meaning that they will not simulate and they will also hold these adjacent pieces in place all right so let's go and check um, how it looks in the viewport. I'll just drag it back out. I don't know how to get rid of this, uh, the preview material on it after doing the fracture mode, so I just drag it back out. I'm sure there's some button to press somewhere, but I, I don't know where it is, so uh, I'll just explode this and take a look. Let's see. Um, invert selection to look inside. Yeah, looks okay. What we'll do is we'll go here now, set this to be the plaster. Uh, rough yep and i'll just have to click this reset button then it'll come up and it looks a little bit funky so i'll just tweak these material settings let's tile it um, by two and then also in the normal strength just bring that down a little bit yeah i think that looks a bit better let's leave it there for now i also like to come here go cluster connection type uh, bounds overlap filtered it tends to have the best uh, results when it comes to like pieces hanging there that were 
part of a cluster and um, it thinks it's still anchored because the cluster is connected somewhere else and yeah so it just has less floating pieces basically I like to also set the minimum mass to like two I find that helps a little bit with jittery pieces um, all right let's unexplode that and let's see if we've done everything we need all right so what I'll do to actually make a destructible out of this is I'll go into the next gen destruction blueprints actors breakable object I'll drag that out so what this has is it obviously just takes the dot asset as I was saying before so all we need to do is uh, go make a new dot asset or in this case I'm just going to duplicate an existing one because it has roughly you know the the right stuff and I, I can tweak from there so it's a uh, it's a good option to just get up and running really fast um, so well, let's just call it mega scans wall and then really the only thing we need to change is like this uh, mega scans wall as the geometry collection save that um, and let's just drag that into the data asset um, I like to just lift it up, press end, snap it to the floor. And maybe actually one thing I'll do is just make this damage radius a tiny bit bigger. Um, and let's have a play and see if that works. Yeah, it does. So that's how to easily uh, bring your own assets and just make destructibles from them really fast uh, you can probably do it faster than me i sort of messed around a bit but it's really easy to just sort of you know you can just duplicate one of these that you know if you've got something that's wood or plaster or concrete glass whatever ceramic and then just use that as the sort of template and there you have it that's that's all there is to it really thanks for watching